Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing an exoplanet we've discussed previously many times. The planet you see right here, known as WASP-76b. A planet that was discovered back in 2013, but became pretty famous when the scientists discovered that it might contain the phenomenon referred to as Iron Rain. And that's because this object, like so many other hot Jupiters, is so extremely close to the parent star that it basically gets heats up to the point where the iron melts and potentially evaporates, creating some really surprising effects somewhere in the atmosphere of this unusual object. Although the later studies actually discovered that maybe there is no iron and maybe all of this was actually a result of the observations from the star itself, but the more recent studies do suggest that iron is present there, but that the planet itself is a lot stranger than we ever thought, and as the new study discovers, might actually contain a lot of other elements that are not expected here, because it seems to have swallowed a much smaller planet in the past. So here we have a kind of a, I guess, murder mystery. And so let's discuss some of these recent discoveries and some of the unusual properties discovered about this unusual planet. But let's start with what we know about the star system and the planet itself. So first of all, this is what's known as an F-type star. It's a little bit hotter than the Sun, also a little bit more active and a little bit more massive, but also a star that contains a hot Jupiter relatively close to itself. Here the distance is only about 3% of the distance of Earth to the Sun, with a single orbit taking approximately 1.8 days. But because of the way the planet passes in front of a star, when looked at from planet Earth, we can actually see what's happening in the atmosphere, as you can see right there, as the starlight passes through the atmosphere of this planet, revealing the atmospheric composition of this unusual gas giant. Although in terms of the mass and the size, it's actually a somewhat typical planet. It's about 90% the mass of Jupiter, but it's also much larger at approximately 180% in terms of size. It's still not entirely understood why these planets seem to expand when located so close to these stars, with this phenomenon of poofy planets still being sort of poorly understood. Nevertheless, because this planet is so close to the star, even though it's 630 light years away from us, it was still detected pretty quickly and confirmed very quickly as well. But the intriguing first discovery here was that even though the temperature is supposed to be about 1900 degrees Celsius, the observed daytime temperature is a little bit hotter. It's approximately 2200 Celsius or 4000 Fahrenheit. And that of course implies that the atmosphere does produce some kind of a greenhouse effect and seems to trap some of the heat from the star. But it's unlikely to be your typical gases like CO2. The temperatures here are just way too hot. So it must be something else. Some other exotic material that seems to act just like CO2 at much higher temperatures around these planets. And as I mentioned a few years ago, the discovery of iron, as well as titanium oxide and even small amounts of water, made this a really exciting new planet to study. This of course suggested that the planet was so hot that even the liquid iron turned into gas, and created some kind of an unusual atmospheric effect similar to rain on planet Earth. Here the idea was that it's quite likely that on the bright side of the planet, everything was heated up so much that it most likely turned into gas, but as it traveled across the planet, in the so-called twilight area between the bright and the dark side, the gas would then start to condensate, create all kinds of precipitation, and literally create some kind of a liquid metallic rain. But all of this metallic liquid would then recycle itself, returning to the other side, repeating the same process again. However, some of the additional observations suggested that we might be also seeing some of these elements coming from the star and not necessarily the planet. And so here there was a bit of an uncertainty exactly what was happening around this unusual planet and what was producing these strange observations. And so even more detailed observations were conducted in the last few months, in a process revealing even more elements such as lithium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, manganese, potassium, and iron but intriguingly, a lot of this was actually extremely similar to the star. Okay, it's maybe not that unusual, because today we do believe that gas giants generally contain very similar materials to the parent star, mostly because they're made around the same time and from pretty much the same stuff, but there were some things that were either missing or some things that were here and not on the star. And so now the science is using one of the most powerful instruments for this, Maroon X, on top of the Gemini North Telescope, we're able to obtain the most detailed observations of what's happening here and where all of this stuff might have come from. And so once again, they did discover quite a lot of various elements, with some things in quite a large abundance. We had things like sodium, calcium, chromium, lithium, hydrogen, magnesium, nitrogen, manganese, potassium, and barium. Quite a variety of different elements that seems to circulate around the planet. 
but strangely enough, and I guess more excitingly, they discovered quite a lot of vanadium oxide, but pretty much discovered no titanium, which was implied previously and was definitely seen from the star. Apart from titanium, aluminium was also absent and a few other elements that were actually expected based on previous observations. Now this was the most detailed observation and it basically suggested that indeed some of the things we saw must have been coming from the star and not the planet. But there's a definitive sign that this planet contains a lot of stuff that shouldn't be there. And in this case, the best explanation so far involves some kind of a large planetary collision where the gas giants most likely consumed a much smaller planet. Very likely a planet similar in properties and composition to Mercury, or basically a smaller terrestrial world. And here this was visible as an abundance of elements like nickel, magnesium and chromium, which are quite common on various terrestrial worlds, but are extremely uncommon on gas giants. And so in this case this basically implies that as this gas giant traveled closer to the parent star, it most likely consumed at least one planet, and possibly even more, with quite a large amount of elements eventually being deposited in the upper atmosphere. Otherwise, it's kind of difficult to explain where all of this nickel came from. Nickel, by the way, is very common in various planetary cores, including the ones in planet Earth. And then there was the presence of vanadium oxide. Now this is an element that most of us are probably not familiar with, although it's actually a really cool element that dramatically changes colors depending on what you actually do with it, and depending on the amount of water present, but also goes through some other dramatic changes or phase shifts as they're known, when you, for example, heat up this element or when you pressurize it in some of the more extreme conditions such as around this planet. Now at the moment it would be very difficult to determine exactly what this element does to this planet, but it's definitely the first time this molecule was confirmed around an exoplanet and it potentially has a lot of impact on the atmospheric structure as well as temperature around this planet. For example, one thing that scientists are pretty certain about is that it seems to play a similar role to ozone on planet Earth. More specifically, it also seems to play a role in heating up upper atmosphere and is potentially the reason this planet is a little bit hotter than it should be. So basically it's also a kind of a greenhouse gas. On top of this, it very likely is responsible for creating a lot of variations in the atmospheric temperature and specifically for creating certain conditions where the temperature drops quite dramatically by hundreds or even thousands of degrees. And so here the scientists believe vanadium oxide might be the reason why no titanium or aluminium was discovered. And that's because what seems to be happening here is the phenomenon referred to as cold trapping. And so here is basically what the scientists believe is happening here. Certain elements such as titanium and aluminium that should be present here generally also have a very high temperature of condensation. They turn into gas at temperatures closer to 1600 Kelvin. A lot of other elements observed here, such as calcium, turn into gas at lower temperatures. Now the day side temperature here is much higher, but it's quite likely that the night side temperature or even the temperature at the border in the twilight zone is just under 1500 Kelvin. And so a lot of these gases like titanium and aluminium most likely just condense on the dark side, fall deep into the planet and potentially disappear from the upper atmosphere. And so any element with condensation temperature of over 1500 Kelvin is most likely trapped on the dark side and never makes it to the surface. Which obviously implies that similar effects probably happen around other planets, especially planets with sort of borderline temperatures, while also implying that the atmospheric conditions and atmospheric phenomena around various hot Jupiters are just really beyond our comprehension right now. They're super complex, everything here happens really fast, with a lot of this involving dramatic changes in the atmospheric temperature and composition depending on where you're located around this unusual object. Which also means that it's probably extremely different in appearance depending on where you actually look at it from. Some of the first simulations presented it as something like this, but it's extremely unlikely to look like that, especially because both of these sites appear to be relatively similar. Naturally, because all of these discoveries were only made in the last few years, we probably still have many years to go, before all of this is determined definitively. But I guess more importantly, by studying these extreme worlds and by seeing what's happening in their atmosphere, it sort of takes us a little bit closer to solving different mysteries of the formation of gas giants because we normally do not see these heavier elements anywhere in the solar system around objects like Jupiter. They still have these elements, but they're all basically trapped inside. Here we get to see all of this on the outside, potentially allowing us to study these objects and their mysterious evolution in detail that would be otherwise completely unavailable. But this is just one of many recent discoveries about hot Jupiters or these unusual gas giants 
in the last few months. You can learn more about these objects in some of the videos in the description. And so once again this planet proves to us that it's just a little bit different. It seems to have consumed another planet in the past, and it seems to have these unusual atmospheric effects that we haven't really observed yet anywhere else. Which probably means that we're going to be talking more about this object in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.